All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Gen Furukawa, who is in Chicago by way of Austin, Texas. How are you doing, Gen? Hey, John, I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, again, as part of the pre-hook team, um, loves helping entrepreneurs build awesome e-commerce brands. Um, and what we're going to talk about today is uh, how do you how do you better understand prospect slash customer problems, and how do you uh, make sure that you provide a solution that meets their needs? And this is the this is the uh, obviously perennial problem with sales when you're trying to sell is is that part is really understanding the customer problem to begin with. So uh, let's start there again. Um, what do you see as some of the issues? Some of, Number one, what are some of the issues that people have with, with really getting to the heart of what a customer problem is? And then how would you advise them to overcome that? Yeah, sure. So uh, I should clarify that this is, this is, um, uh, so I'm a co-founder of Preok. Preok is a quiz platform for Shopify brands. We basically help merchants ask a few questions, capture a lead, and recommend a product. And so it's it's kind of taking the uh, the sales experience, the same experience you'd have if you're at a store and you're talking to a sales associate, or if you're at a restaurant and you're mm -hmm. speaking with a sommelier or a barista at a coffee bar. And it you know it, it's it's so simple, but. Uh, you know, just asking a few questions. What are their goals? What are their challenges? Where are they currently at? Like, what is their point A? And then what is their point B, their aspirational future end goal? And then mm -hmm. understanding those two points, you can understand how your product, how your brand fits in to bridge them from their current state to their future aspirational state. So, you know, in in terms of sales, it's a, it's elementary because that's kind of like what salespeople mm -hmm. are are geared towards is understanding the customer pain points. But when you're talking about e-commerce, you're talking about marketing, you're talking about things at scale. It's far less intuitive and far more difficult a challenge to navigate. How you understand these these customer challenges because it could be any variety of challenges that they're trying to solve. Um, but if you're just asking a few questions, you can illuminate that relatively quickly. Um, so that that's kind of like where mm. how I, I would answer your question. Um, yeah. And, you know, for 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 background, I am I've been in uh, kind of e-commerce e and e-commerce SaaS for 10 years, uh, was previously leading the team, uh, the marketing team at Jungle Scout, which is an mm -hmm. Amazon product research tool. Uh, and so the the challenges that Amazon merchants face is very different than that of, say, um, a Shopify merchant who is just driving traffic to their site, but not necessarily knowing what their customers right. looking for, yeah, yeah. as opposed to Amazon, where you're really focused on a very specific search query and answering that question. That's what you're marketing to. But Shopify, even if it's just a multivitamin product, you know, are you solving for immunity or sleeplessness, achy joints, uh, anxiety, all these things um, you don't know until you ask a few questions. Mm -hmm. And then how do, how do you make sure that you you construct them in such a way as I mean, because I feel sometimes people have got like form fatigue, if you like, you know, they, yeah. they don't want they don't want to answer too many things. And they're like, where's my information going? All this kind of stuff. So how do you strike the balance there? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I think the crux of it is, are you adding value? So mm -hmm. um, Accenture did a really interesting study. Basically, 81 percent of consumers are willing to share customer information, their own data. But the the flip side, the the hook is that there has to be some value in exchange. So if there is value in exchange, people are willing to share their personal information. That value is um, is often translated to personalized experiences. So if you can um, say, okay, John, you know, if, if you're, uh, if I'm selling golf balls, if I, if I know mm -hmm. like what what stroke your stroke is, if, if you uh, kind of like hook or fade or, or whatever, how often you play your skill level, like what you're looking for. If I can understand these things, then I can uh, offer you more relevant content, more relevant messaging, more relevant offers. Um, so that that's where um, people can, you can get past the form fatigue because I totally agree. Like who wants to um, fill out another form unless there is something of value in exchange. And I think that's really where 
um, where the good quizzes can differentiate from, you know, just another pop-up offering 15% off um, is that there's something on the other end that a customer is willing to share um, often proprietary data um, so that they can get a better shopping experience. Mm-hmm. So I guess part of the challenge then is the is you know how to construct it so that it it makes logical sense for them and that it kind of builds on each other. So so that I as you said so that as I'm going through this I'm starting to see the value of actually giving you additional information. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and so you want to you want to get the right hook in there. You know what what is it that that's really like would help John learn more about himself or that would pique his curiosity so that he would click through whether it's on a home page or whether it's on a paid ad to go to a landing page, a paid landing page on your mm-hmm. site. So it's that hook, that curiosity about ourselves. Um, and then, you know, the end goal is that you're uh, asking a few questions, you're gathering the data that John proactively and willingly shares so that we understand the why. Like, what is he looking for? Why is he on the site? What problems is he solving for? Or is, does, is he currently experiencing? And then how do we fit into that equation? So it's really, that's where it gets interesting. And I'm sure that's where a lot of your um, expert mm-hmm. guests on Sales Pop can um, identify, like, okay, where, 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 kind of like archaeologists uh, or it's trying to figure out what the customer is looking for and, and how we can insert ourselves in the conversation in, in their psyche. Mm-hmm. And so how how are how are buy, buyer behaviors evolving, especially in, in the e-commerce space? Because I mean I feel like obviously people are so used to leveraging e-commerce these days, not like in the old days when it first started, like it's kind of second nature, but what is, what are they looking for from an experience and what makes them trust a particular brand? I think that's the inherent part of a quiz is that the, the trust is, is kind of like related to um, the, the credibility, the expertise, the authority that you establish but it's specific to the questions that you ask. So, for example, say you know the, uh, a quiz is a a common tool and, and strategy for a lot of nut- nutritional supplements, mm-hmm. and the value is because uh, the nutritional supplements could the same pill uh, could address a, a variety of needs, but. If you are able to establish, okay, so here's what you're experiencing. Here's why you're experiencing that. Here's what you can do about it. Here's how you'll feel better. Here's how our product plays into that. All these uh, kind of like the multidimensional part of it is uh, kind of like uh, open email by email and the post quiz experience. So that's one way that you can establish authority and expertise. That's how you can uh, build a foundation of trust as well as uh, the in-quiz experience. So uh, one example is Noom. So Noom is a a nutritional brand or or more of like a a lifestyle and diet uh, app and and product to Mm -hmm. help you get to your aspirational end goal. They'll ask you uh, questions in the form of a quiz to understand where you're currently going, what your habits are, what what your daily routines are like, um, and then where you you wanna go. All along the way, they're kind of like using uh, your quiz responses and uh, building rapport, building trust by saying, okay, so you are, you know, people of your profile who do this and that um, can address their goals or reach their goals by doing, you know, X, Y, and Z. Um, Point being that they are asking and educating at the same time. And so that's, that's critical in establishing trust. If you think of, um, if you've ever read Robert Cialdini's um, book, Influence, that authority and expertise are one of the key pillars of establishing influence so that you can get people to uh, kind of like act in the way that you're hoping. Mm -hmm. Um, And so you only know uh, what's educational, what's relevant if you ask them. Yeah, and and I think what you're outlining there, and I think this is the this is a very important uh, piece here, is what you're outlining there is, it almost feels from the other side like you're doing a bit of a diagnostic, like you're actually looking at, you're diving deep, and it's all very personal to me. And I feel like, as you said, I feel like maybe I'm learning something as I go along, as I answer these questions, as opposed, so it becomes a different experience as opposed to I'm just filling out something to get a product. I'm actually learning. And I feel like I'm getting a customized solution at the end. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's exactly it. Um, that the, the educational element, um, is, is critical, but understanding what's educational or what's important to me is even more important. And, and so I think mm-hmm. that's like, one thing that I would want to share is that the quiz is, is 
multi-dimensional and versatile in terms of its use case and that relates to where in the customer journey it, you, you use a quiz so for example you could use it as a landing page for um, top of funnel people you know you're mm -hmm. you're using it as a paid ad landing page um, and it might be a coffee brand hey discover the next great um, coffee uh, or uh, what's your skincare routine how do you address these um, skincare problems um, but it, it's for a top funnel or it could be middle of funnel where you're educating them you're, you're asking and, and um, what are you trying to learn for more and that's where you're establishing expertise or it could be a bottom of funnel where you're um, learning about them and then comparing say for example a helix mattress which is a an expensive mm -hmm. dtc mattress brand how it compares maybe to casper or tufted needle or other things um but you can you can be very granular in how you're uh positioning and merchandising your product relative to competition and even post quit post purchase uh, a quiz offers value in terms of like the uh, how did you hear about us so you get a little bit of the the attribution mm -hmm. so you know where your marketing dollars went and what the efficacy is of that spend to acquire a customer um, so it, it literally like runs a whole gamut of top of funnel to post purchase mm -hmm. and then i guess the part of it is figuring out okay how long do you want this to be how extensive do you want to be so you really need to understand who's at the who's on the other end right about whether they'd have the appetite for going doing something pretty extensive or whether you need to go with something a little bit more you know fast and simple yeah yeah totally i think you know when i do get this question a lot like what's the ideal uh perfect length of a quiz obviously there's no like one size fits all answer um but i think the universal truth is that it should be as short as possible while adding value throughout value being mm -hmm. value to you the merchant and value to the end customer um you know you, you might see quizzes like if you were if you were seasoned what would your season be or if you go to a bar what what drink do you order um, maybe those offer some value if you're like a coffee or wine brand and you're trying to like hone in on somebody's mm -hmm. taste but i i think maybe you could it, it might be superfluous or might um, take more time and every question that a customer answers is just one more opportunity for them to bounce out of the quiz exit and then you've lost the opportunity to capture their email to recommend a product and um, to position your product appropriately um, so yeah I, I always opt for uh short and sweet if possible and making sure that every data point is helpful in some way whether it's for segmenting or whether it's for recommending the product or whether it's for you know like you understanding your your own product as it relates to mm -hmm. product research as long as there's some value behind it, um, I think that that's uh, kind of like the key metric there. Yeah, and, and I guess the part of it too is to make sure that uh, the person on the other end, as I said earlier, doesn't feel like you're trying to get too much information out of them, or as you said, superfluous information, because that could be a real turnoff immediately. You'd be like, why are you asking that? And, and they start to get a bit suspicious of it. So I mean, keeping it to what's what's valuable to both you and the customer keeping it very tight within that and what makes logical sense like because it obviously it wouldn't make logical sense to ask a question out of left field suddenly exactly yeah and so that's kind of working towards the 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 sequencing of the questions where you might want to start with micro conversions easy ways to get them started almost warmed up like uh uh, one uh, wine quiz, for example, is like, um, do you like red or white? Or um, would you try a, a wine from Europe? Um, easy questions. They don't require a lot of thought. They don't necessarily put us on our heels immediately, um, but they're, they're ways to get us started. And so in some ways, it's very similar to copywriting where, you know, copywriting, mm -hmm. the main goal of your, of your copy is to get them to read the first sentence. The main goal of the first sentence is to get them to re read the second sentence and so on. And you're kind of like moving them down this um, this slide of mm -hmm. things until they're at their ideal end goal where you wanted them to be. And same with a quiz. You really don't want to put them on the, on their heels immediately. So um, start with easier questions, exactly as you mentioned, so you don't have them questioning why they're, they're in this experience in the first place. Um, and then kind of like ratchet up, uh, I, I think, thoughtfully strategically until uh, I often recommend capturing an email and or phone number uh, at the end. The phone number you might want to make optional, then the, mm -hmm. the uh, product recommendation, then the post quiz experience via email or SMS. 
Uh, absolutely. And uh, what can you give me in a couple of examples? You don't have to name them, but uh, you know, companies that you've worked with and that have that have done this and transformed their business. Can you just give me a couple of examples and maybe even ones that have surprised you? Yeah, sure. So um yeah, one is is T Elixir. So T Elixir is an adaptogen brand, an ancient adaptogen brand. Um, and they um they are uh they have a couple of different challenges. One is that people don't necessarily know uh, much about adaptogens. So adaptogens are like ancient medicines, like um, mushrooms. And, and so mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a way to address health concerns. But people don't know uh, much about it, nor do they know which adaptogen is appropriate for their health concerns, whether it's anxiety or joint pain or sleeplessness or uh, any number of issues. Uh, so they use a quiz to help with the, the customer and the product education. And they did a really effective job of merchandising the quiz, uh, as in it, it proved itself. They did significant testing first, uh, realized that there, there is a significant uh, financial uptick for those that take the quiz. And I think off the top of my head is a 35% increase in conversion rate of those who took mm -hmm. the quiz versus those that didn't. Uh, a 5x uh value increase in uh value of um of lead that took the quiz versus did not take the quiz and a 2x increase in email opt-in rate so, so basically if somebody took the quiz versus um a kind of a static pop in our list or whatever um and so i think some of the takeaways there are uh they use a quiz uh, they merchandise it well so if you go to Telix, I don't think I think they changed it recently, um, but you'll see the quiz. They have a, a fixed nav at the top of their page. They have it in their navigation in, in their header. They have it on their home page. Um, so it's really like the the first place for a customer go to go to begin their customer journey with Telixer. And then from there, uh, they Telixer has segments on the back end so that um, based on what their health concerns were or um, what what their goals are people will get different flows. And so they use Clavio to to segment kind of like at a high level. It just mm -hmm. it's in Clavio, it's called conditional splits. Um, but if they are uh, dealing with anxiety, then they'll get this set of emails that address anxiety specifically or or um, sleeplessness or or joint pains. Um, so that that's just one example where I think they use a quiz in a very versatile way to gather information, to grow their list, and to improve their ROI, improve their acquisition costs um, by using the customer data that they've gathered. Yeah, no, that's a great example, um, particularly because, uh, as you said, I mean, people may not be familiar with uh, with what this even is or how it could help them. So being able to do that quiz is uh, it's very helpful. Yeah, I can see it on their site. It's, uh, it's uh, like I said, if I went to that site, I'd probably take the quiz because I don't really know much about the products. Yeah, yeah, ab absolutely. Um, and so, yeah, we, we have uh, a bunch of others. I think one that I think is kind of a cool one is Evolve Skateboards, um, oh. kind of like motorized skateboards, a, a global mm -hmm. brand. They have like an Australian and, and US site. But um, that's another example of like, okay, I, I, I know I want a skateboard, but do I want to... Um, do I want to take it off road? Do I want to take it on, on only for, you know, flat ro roads? So I want it to commute or do I want it long distance? There are all these like kind of nuances of, uh, of a product where, you know, they have, uh, many different models and variants within those models. Um, so it, it just, the, the quiz in this case is, uh, great to replicate what it would be like if you were to go to the store, talk about what, what type of board you're looking for, how you expect to use it, what performance you're expecting out of the board, and then they recommend the product. Um, and they're doing very well with the quiz in terms of um, their ROI and their conversion of those who take the quiz um, versus those that don't. And, um, and so it, I think that's kind of like one use case that's more reliant on email and SMS because it's, its price point is a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's exactly where you're going to get a lot of mileage from uh, the the data because for for most brands, you know, like 30% might be the benchmark of uh, revenue for for online revenue uh, coming from email and SMS. Um, and so the more that you can augment the the customer profile, the more that you know about the customer and you know um, what would be relevant and, and compelling, the more that you can kind of extract value 
monetary value from your email automation to SMS automations and uh, evolved skateboards is a great example of that. Yeah, no, that's that's a that's a great example. And I guess the thing is, um, we can all point to experiences when we've gone into stores and the the person who's helping us isn't an expert, doesn't really know what they're talking about, maybe got hired the week before. Whereas um, with this experience, you know, you can always deliver like the, the latest, you know, the most expert like feedback possible and, and guide people. So in some ways you have a you have a bit of an advantage over uh, brick and mortar, huh? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And, and when you consider that you can, you know, build one scale infinitely, that it's yeah. it's 24 seven, that you, you have that consistency. So um, it really is a great evergreen tool. So uh, there's a little bit of an investment upfront to build it properly. And it's not only the quiz itself, but it's, um, you know, working with your email or SMS tools to because mm -hmm. that's where the data is most valuable. Um, but then from there, brands can really scale this nicely. And, and you know, like it, it's the beauty of online marketing. Put a dollar in, you might get two, yeah. three, four out. Um, and that's really ideally the formula. You're sending paid traffic to this quiz and um, yeah, yeah, leads. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, listen, thanks for all again's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and Prehook. Yeah, so uh, we started building Prehook in 2020. Um, like I mentioned, it was me and, and my two co-founders are um, from uh, have been working together since 2015 at Jungle Scout, and uh, really our main goal was just to uh, like kind of identify ways that we can help merchants to um, get more value out of their stores. Um, and so we're we're on this journey now where um, the the value has changed significantly. You know, when you're considering iOS mm -hmm. 14. Um, what marketers are dealing with, with the rising uh, ad costs, the lack of data in order to create targeted campaigns, um, and this, uh, the increasing competition. Um, we're really excited by what merchants are able to do with a quiz and the value that we're able to, to bring from it. Fantastic. Listen, thanks again, Gen. Thank you all for watching and listening. And I would go uh, encourage you, go check it out. Maybe that's exactly what's missing from, from your e-commerce site. Uh, thank you again, again. Thank you for watching and listening. See you all again pretty soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.